Hello, everyone. My name is Sadana Singh. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my personal transformation, a couple of them. Thus far, I have lived three distinct lives. I'm not here to tell you that I'm an alien transformed into a human being, but it's something like that. In my first life, I am from Guyana. This small country in South America was a colony of Great Britain until 1966, which explains a population of predominantly Indians and Africans. 20 years later, in 1986, I was born in Georgetown, the capital city on the coast. Our culture is considered Caribbean rather than continental. I grew up speaking English. I ate food that was a mix of Indian, African, and Asian. And I listened to music that was soca, calypso, and Bollywood. I had a great childhood. My brother, who is three years younger than me, he was my best friend. Together, we rode our bikes around the neighborhood. We chased our dogs around the yard. We played Power Rangers with our friends. My family lived a simple life. I, we were not rich, but we were not poor either. My dad was a chauffeur and my mom was a stay-at-home mother. I never went hungry or without clothes, but we were struggling to make ends meet. In my second life, I am from Georgia in the southeastern United States. My family immigrated to the US in 1999 when I was 13 years old. They wanted better educational and economic opportunities for us, so we settled in Georgia and started building a new life. In Guyana, we speak a dialect we call Guyanese Creole. This American dialect of English that I'm speaking right now, I picked it up quickly from watching TV shows like The Simpsons and Friends. Being able to easily speak American, I made phone calls and filled out forms and applications for my parents. I got utilities turned on, I paid the bills, and I balanced the checkbook. I fully embraced American life. At 13, I was enamored with NSYNC and Britney Spears. But I was so painfully embarrassed when people couldn't say my name, Sadana, that I picked a random American name, Ashley, and I made everyone call me that. I wanted to blend in and be just like my American friends. And for the most part, I was good at it. In high school, I loved learning and I threw myself into academics. I was sociable, outgoing, and cheerful. But I had a secret. I couldn't do all the same things that my friends were doing. You see, my parents migrated with tourist visas. And when they expired after three months, we lost status and became undocumented. I had known this from day one, so it didn't come as a shock to me like it does for some others at 16 when they try to get driver's licenses. I knew this from the beginning. In Georgia, where I lived, this status became a stigma. We were the only undocumented people that we knew, and my brother and I had no one else to relate to. I was afraid to come out to my friends. I thought that they would see me as inferior and treat me differently. All I wanted was to move on with my life and pursue my goals like everyone else, but I was ashamed to reveal that I was undocumented and that college was not going to be my reality. So in high school, in my senior year, when all my friends would talk about the colleges they were applying to and where they got accepted, I would just lie and pretend that I was doing the same thing. I was completely in the shadows. I was never able to go to a teacher or a counselor to explain my situation and ask for help. In 2005, I graduated near the top of my class with honors, but I was alienated. I was alone. But life went on, and I stayed positive. I got a job a month after graduation, and I started working to help my family. I thought this was only going to be for a year or two, and then something was going to work out for me to go to college. In Georgia, I was restricted from federal financial aid, the Pell Grant, in-state tuition, private loans, and my parents just didn't have the money to pay out of pocket. But I held on to the hope that someday I would get my chance to earn a degree. 
It turns out that I had to work at that job and wait for close to a decade for that chance. This period was miserable for me. It was difficult to watch my friends move on with their lives while I was stuck in the same place. I couldn't have much of a social life because I didn't have an ID to go out with, I didn't have a license to drive. For nine years, my life consisted of my dad driving me to work in the morning and then picking me up in the afternoons to go back home. Home and work was all I had. On the weekends, I would roam around the house in a daze as if I was a ghost with unfinished business. My brother and I, we turned to movies and books as our window to a world that we couldn't experience. But after a while, I didn't want to just observe life. I wanted to live it. In my early 20s, I was languishing. I felt repressed, suffocated, left behind. Furthermore, my parents brought me here for a reason. I saw what was possible in America. I saw what you could achieve with higher education. I saw what women could achieve. As customary in my culture, women get married at a young age and they start families. But I knew that wasn't for me in my early 20s. I wanted to travel, meet people. I wanted to interact with different cultures and learn new languages. But I had no way of doing that without pieces of paper, without a social security number. I was going nowhere year after year after year. I got depressed. I got angry. I got resentful. I thought, surely I am meant for more than this. In 2012, I received my salvation, DACA. I was 26, and I could now have an ID. I could now drive. I could be legally employed. I didn't have to worry about being deported. This made life significantly better for me and my family because now my brother could drive and work and help support the family. However, I was still not able to afford college on my own. And even with DACA in Georgia, I was not allowed to apply into the top five colleges of that state. However, in 2014, I found out about a scholarship, the dream.us. This is a scholarship that was created at the time for immigrant youth that had DACA. They have the drive and determination for college, but not the financial means. This scholarship was my ticket to my next life. I jumped at the chance and seized the opportunity, even though I was then nine years removed from high school. But finally, after waiting for so long, I started college at the age of 28. In my third life, I am from Washington, DC. In fall of 2014, I started at Trinity Washington University in the heart of DC, and I was the most eager first year student on that campus. Trinity is a small Catholic women's college. And besides my classroom education, that taught me how the world truly worked as opposed to what I saw in the movies, I learned from my Trinity sisters who came from all backgrounds and all walks of life. Our student population is predominantly black and Hispanic women. I also came to Trinity in a cohort of about 20 other dreamers. And for the first time, I felt like I truly fit in. I found a support system and a community that I never experienced before. Our school motto is discover your strength. At Trinity, I discovered the courage and confidence to no longer live in the shadows. And I really stepped out. In my first year, I co-created a Dreamers advocacy organization. And for the past four years, I have been the president of that organization. I've maintained a 3.9 GPA and I have done seven internships. I became a student leader, a public speaker, I became an activist. I started sharing my story, speaking to the press, doing media appearances, and lobbying on Capitol Hill. I've been interviewed by the Washington City Paper, the Washington Post, and the New York Times. 
I've even written myself about the plight of undocumented immigrants. I've been invited to the White House. I've met Nancy Pelosi. And today, I'm giving a TEDx talk. I never imagined that this would be my life after all those years of waiting in anguish. Like the hundreds of thousands of DACA recipients, I'm incredibly grateful for the independence and opportunities that DACA has provided for me. For the past four years, I've had the ability and security to go after my goals when there were times I never thought they would be possible. But I always knew that was temporary. And to be honest, I don't want to have to keep renewing my life every two years. America has been my home for close to two decades now, but for a large part of that time, I couldn't take part in it. I was limited, restricted from the America that I came to love. This May, I will be the first person and first woman to graduate from college in my family. But I'm really anxious about how I can move forward from this point. My goal is to uplift and make lives better for marginalized and impoverished women and girls around the world, those who do not get the same advantages that I have been given. In my third life, I've realized how important it is to have people who believe in me and my potential to succeed, and I want to pay that forward. I need to know that I can live my life without uncertainty and fear at every moment. I need to know that I can make plans without wondering if I or my loved one is going to be detained and deported. I need to know that I deserve happiness and success just as my American peers do. I need to know that the country that I call home sees me as a human being worthy of life and not as an invading alien. How much longer do you think I have to wait? Thank you. <laughs>